Hi again, my name is Hulong Nguyen, Director of Business Development, and I'm glad to welcome you all to Medfar Clinical Solutions webinar on advanced access offerings with Mile Analytics. Our two presenters today will be Andrea McDougall, Product Manager, and Maxim No, Director of Customer Success. The agenda for today will start with a review of the metrics, calculations, and thresholds that are um, presented in the agreement um, that Hulong mentioned at the beginning. Uh, and um, following that, we'll present the dashboard itself, uh, available in Mile An Analytics. We'll go through an FAQ, and then we'll close off with presenting other features that um, we will make available to support you with relation to this agreement. So the agreement in principle, a uh, review of the measures. As you uh, may be aware, an agreement between the FMOQ and the Ministry of Health in Quebec uh, was um, published last June. It came into effect on June 1st. Its objective was to increase the access to frontline services and interdisciplinarity. There, in this agreement, there were three measures that were presented, two of which generated a lot more attention um, within our clients. The first is the measure for access to one's family doctor or GMF. The compensation um, for this specific measure is based on meeting a progressive threshold for advanced access appointments per quarter. We'll go through a specific definition of what advanced access appointments are um, and present those thresholds to you. The second measure um, is related to group enrollment. And most, of, most people refer to it as the GAP initiative. Um, and compensation for this specific measure is based on opening a quarter of a medical appointment time slot per patient enrolled with a group per quarter. Um, this e equates to one uh, medical appointment time slot per patient enrolled in a group per year, essentially. Um, so it's important to mention that the first measure on the left talks about appointments that are booked, and on the right side, it's more about the offering. Um, so two specific definitions that have created, generated a lot of questions for our clients. For the second measure, um, we'll be presenting at the end of the presentation, especially that we are working on making a report available um, to you directly from Miles so that you can export uh, specific availabilities that meet that criteria. Okay, thank you, Andrea. Before we go, a few words to, to, to tell you that I'm, I'm really happy to be with you today to talk about this uh, interesting topic, and we, we really thank you for being with us today. Uh, before we do a deep dive on the Mal Analytics dashboard, it will allow you to track and monitor your progress with regards to this advanced access offering. I think it's important we go back to some of the key concepts and some of the key the, the, the thresholds of that uh, incentive so that we all have that common understanding. So let's jump into those first. And the first concept I want to kind of review with you uh, first is what do we mean by an advanced access appointment? So if we go back to, to the actual agreement wording, uh, an advanced access appointment is actually an appointment for which the time between the actual date the patient books the appointment and the date of the appointment is less than 72 hours. So there's a detail here that's really important and that Andrea just mentioned. So it's really the delay between the date and time of the appointment minus the, the date and time at which it was booked and not offered. So we're not talking about the time at which it, this appointment was offered in the hub, for instance. It's really the moment at which the appointment is created in mile. So that's the first distinction here that's really important to, 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 to understand. Now, the second question, natural question that comes after that is, you know, what, what are the kind of appointments that are kind of part of that agreement? Uh, and, and the answer to that is all type of appointments Either they are because they are online appointments, so because they were booked via the hub through a partner, or they were booked using my patient portal, or even if they're traditional appointments so that they were you know, created by administrative staff, or they're just manual entries in the calendar. So what's important here is that regardless of how the appointment is booked, the ministry's report measures the time between the actual date the patient books the appointment and the date of the appointment. So this is concept one. So we know what an advanced access appointment is. Now, the second concept is to understand the thresholds that are related to, 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 to this incentive. So let's take an example where for the past three months, in my case, I'm a doctor and I gave X amount of appointments. 
um, let's say a certain number of them are online or web appointments and some other are just traditional appointments. So this gives me my total. So we have we really have two thresholds to distinguish. The first one, threshold one, tells me that at least 30% of the appointments are booked within 70 hours. So of course, the objective here is to make sure that a part, which is 30% of my appointments, are given you know, shortly, so within 72 hours. Why 30%? Um, actually, Andrea mentioned that this, you know, that this agreement started last June. So in the in the past quarters, that threshold was, you know, slowly increasing. So I think it started possibly at 10 or 15 percent. And now for the past quarter, it's it's the maximum threshold. So it's the most, it's, it's the hardest one. It's 30 percent. So that's the one we use also in the dashboard for you to be able to monitor if you, you know, succeed in achieving those. So that's threshold one. Uh, the second one tells us that, you know, among all of the appointments that I gave within 72 hours, one third of those, so 33%, are booked within 36 hours. So it means that I have to give a certain number of appointments under 72 hours, and one third of those need to be under 36 hours. So this is the concept here. So if I want to be eligible really to the incentives, I need over the I think it's the quarter uh, part, uh, three months period, 30% of all my appointments must be booked within 72 hours of their scheduled date. And one third, as I said, must be booked within 36 hours. So those were the concepts that we needed to review together. So what is an advanced access appointment and those thresholds. Now that we've done that, I'll leave the presentation and I will go to the demo part and we're gonna deep dive into the dashboard and to mile analytics that will allow you to track your you know your, your monitor your progress on, on this aspect uh first point i want to convey to you is how to access that dashboard so this dashboard can be accessed through the reporting tab at the top um, of course first point here is that it's possible that you do not have access to the reporting tab uh, permissions to the reporting tab are normally restricted to a certain number of users within the clinic and it's normally managed by the administration of the clinic. So in your case, if you do not have access to the reporting tab, I will refer you to the administration of your clinic if you want to see your results or if you want to have access to, to the reporting tab. And for you uh, that uh, are administrators, if you want to extend the permissions within your team, feel free to contact our support team and it's going to be a pleasure for us to support you in that, in that effort. So. Once I'm in the reporting tab, I will, you know, click on the little arrow on the left, bring my list of dashboards. So now the advanced access offering dashboard is part of the Methfar library folder with the rest of the, uh, the dashboard of the library. It's possible that your clinic is configured with the French library. So if, if it's configured in French, the same dashboard exists under Visite en temps opportun within the Medfar Librairie Offerte folder. So it depends just how it is configured in your clinics. It's the same dashboard in both. So it's now today we're going to look at the English version so that it's called it's called advanced access offering within 36, 72 hours. I'm going to close this so we have more space to look at the dashboard. So now I'm going to do my demonstration in two parts. So the first part, we're going to go through the different widgets, graphs, indicators so that we understand them well. And in the second part, I will go through the filters on the right hand side. It will allow you to just question the dashboard from different angles. Now, of course, today I'm going to start by showing you my data as, a, as a, of course, a fake doctor, Dr. Jean Lapointe. And we're going to look at my data for the past three months that are official. So the last quarter uh, for the ministry is December, January and February. Of course, all data I'm showing you is all fictive. It's part of our demonstration environment, so there's no confidential information in there. Um, if we looked at the dashboard first, uh, well, the header is just key information that we just covered. So of course, the objective of the, da of the dashboard and some key definitions. So what we mean by an advanced access appointments and what's the delay that is used to you know, compute the different thresholds. So now, if we looked at those thresholds, so if we look at the dashboard, uh, at the top, there are two important numbers, and those two numbers correspond to the two thresholds that we just uh, mentioned and, and covered. So let's look at them again. So threshold one mentions that in my case, for the past three months, it says that 96.55% of all my appointments were given within 72 hours. So that's that's actually pretty high. I'm quite proud of my metrics. Uh, of course, this number is, is higher than 
so therefore it is green. So remember, so that first uh, threshold mentions that 30% of my, the total number of appointments must be given under 72 hours, which is my case. Now let's dig into that second threshold, which sometimes is a bit more complex to understand. So what it says is that among all of the number of appointments that I've given under 72 hours, we remember that one third of them must be given under 36 hours. So this is not a fraction of all the appointments I gave under 36 hours. It's the percentage of the appointments given under 72 hours that are actually under 36. And we remember, and it's written here, uh, here in case you forget, but one third of them, so 33% must be given within 36 hours. It's the case, it's green, I'm all good. So those really are the two metrics corresponding to the threshold really related to the incentives for the period of time that you selected on the right hand side. Now, of course, you'll want most probably to dig into those results uh, and monitor, let's say, your trends over the past months and see which trends, you know, you have the, the, the lowest metrics and, and, and see if you put initiatives in your clinics to see what their benefits are and see if you're on track. So we have two widgets for you to help you on that front. The one on the left here will show you for each uh, month your absolute numbers of appointments. So basically, it's going to show you the number of appointments that you have uh, total and the number of appointments you have under 36 hours and the one that you gave under 72 hours. OK, so this is the absolute number, the total of appointments. Um, so you can see that and track that on a monthly basis. Now, if we look at the center portion, this is more in terms of, of percentage. So it's gonna, you have two colors. The green is for the 72 hours appointments and the blue is for the appointments under 36 hours. So if we take a first example and I'm gonna look at the first green line here, it's gonna tell me for each month, what is the fraction of my appointments that were given under 72 hours? So in my case, 95%, 98%, 96%. Now, the target, if we look here, uh, is 30%. So I'm above, that's perfect. Same thing for the 36 appointments, the 36 hours. So the percentage that I gave in terms of absolute numbers of my appointments is 92, 89, 86. And my target, now my target is not a fixed line because you remember that it needs to be one third of actually the, the, the green line here. So that's basically what you want. I wanna keep it simple is that your two lines here are above the two lines that are called target. So this is really to give you the trend on a monthly basis. And finally, on the right, right hand side here, you'll see for the period that he selected, you'll see the percentage in absolute of, of the total number of appointments that he gave, the percentage that are uh, under 36 hours. So in my case, it's 88%, 89%. It's really high, I know. Uh, and here you'll have the percentage of appointments that were given under 72 hours. Now, this widget is kind of the same like it's close to those metrics at the top. It's really more insightful if you look at the entire clinic. So I'm just gonna switch my tab here at the top. It's my, it's still my demonstration clinic. I just wanna show you that, you know, if you look at all the calendars in your clinic, now this widget will allow you to see, you know, who's really good uh, and, and, and achieving those metrics and maybe who's lagging a little bit more. So it gives you kind of an overview when you look at it, like from a clinic perspective. Uh, whereas here, if I go back to where I was, I actually selected, you know, one doctor, which is me. So that's why it's only two bars. So again, those two thresholds at the top, those are the important numbers. And here it's really to give you like a trend over the past months. And the last thing that you will have at your disposal are the actual listings. So if you want to dig into the results, just to make sure of that you understand each and single number in the reports, you have three lists for you. You'll have first, you'll have the list of the appointments that are under 36 hours uh, for the selected um, doctors, resources, and time period. And for each of the lists, you'll have their group by month. You'll have the health insurance number of the patients, the service of the appointment. And by the way, I mentioned that if you have an appointment that has no service, will still appear in the table, no worries there. You'll have the resource of the appointment, family doctor of the patient, if it applies. In my case, it's a demo clinic, so we do not have registered patients. And here you'll have for each of the appointments, the creation date, the appointment date, and that famous kind of time difference that I was mentioning. So we need this one to be under 36 hours if you want to be in that list. 
and then you'll have a list for those that are given within 72 hours as well you also have the list of those appointments that were you know beyond 72 hours so those are really the detailed listing uh for those of you that are maybe not as familiar with my analytics i want to you know uh, show you a trick so for each of the table if you look at my cursor you'll see that on the corner top right you have three little dots so if i click on those three little dots now it should be download I apologize my account is here configured in french you'll see download and you can download that list in excel and you can download it in terms of csv as well so those are format csv comma separated value that you can bring into excel but for you know simplicity you can download those lists as an excel file in case you want to share it with you know a clinician in your clinic that do not have access to mile analytics so that was a trick i wanted to remind you of um so now those are the that's as simple as that those are metrics that you have at your disposal now let's look at the filters on your right hand side that you can use to you know filter the information again for those of you that are a bit less familiar with mile analytics uh, each of those boxes are different filters uh, and to change them I invite you to click on the little pencil that's on the top corner right. So now the filters that you have on the right, of course, you can filter the time interval. So I'm looking at the past months, but I could go back and I could, you know, select here additional month and my dashboard will just update consequently. Okay, so this is, you can, you're not restrained to look at one month, three months, you can pick that. It brings me an important point that I wanna stop here is as, as any dashboard in Mile Analytics, the data is updated on a daily basis. So what it means is, of course, if you created appointments today in Mile, they will not appear in the dashboard. They will they will be there tomorrow, though. So it's really actual data, but it's it's 24 hours old at the latest. Uh, the second filter is uh, simple: the the resource of the appointment. So I'm looking for myself. Of course, I could look for all the clinics, change for any clinician in my clinic to give them the report. That's easy. Now I can filter by appointment status. Again, my demo environment here is, is, is a French one, but in your case, if it's configured in English, you'll see the appointment status in English. What I wanna highlight here is that we wanna remove the appointments that are canceled, either by the patient or by the personal. We also wanna remove the no-shows uh, in those stats. So that's why that, that filter is, 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 important, is important. Now you can also, filter by appointment services so it, i don't know in, in some clinics they created new services for specifically for advanced access uh, i mentioned at the beginning that all appointments are eligible in that you know in that part of the agreement but if you want to look at your metrics for specific services same thing as any you know any filters you can just uncheck check only the services that you're interested in and then the dashboard will just adjust then you can filter by patient enrollment status. So it's important that 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 this incentive on the 36, 72 hours, you know, advanced access offering applies to patients that are registered with one of the doctor at the clinic. So it's really important not to do like me uh, and to check only the yes option. So in my case, it's it's a fake clinic. I do not have registered patients, so that's why the no option is the one that's checked. Uh, but in your case you want to make sure that you check it only for the patients that are registered and finally there's a little filter here about the appointment site it's another angle if you want to look you have, if you have a clinic that has multiple sites and you want to you know compare and look at the, the the different metrics using the appointment sites as a filter you can do that as well this filter is grayed out because it's just deactivated but there's a little slider i can just slide it on use the pencil again to just filter the information okay so this is the different filters that you are that are at your disposal i also want to mention that you can always if you look at my cursor at the top print that also in pdfs so that's also important if you want to just print the results in pdf you can do that as well there's even a little edit mode you can change make sure that all the widgets you can slide you can make sure everything fits in the page you can play with the orientation of the pages this is at your disposal you can then if i just go down here you'll be able to save and download the pdf again so this is just if you want to share with clinicians in your team the results but you don't want to really extend the permission to mile analytics that's something that you can do and I think on this, that covers everything on the dashboard, Andrea. Let's go back to our FAQ section. So I will go back to our uh, presentation here. 
I will go back to our frequently asked questions. And I think you have one for me to start to start up. I do, and uh, I've been monitoring some of the questions that come through, um, the questions of the participants. And one of the questions was why, uh, if I take a look at the list of appointments in the dashboard at the bottom section, I notice that an appointment delay is negative. Uh, why would that be? It's 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 a very good question, Andrea, and it's and it is possible. So. Anyway, the, the, the delay of an appointment will be negative if an appointment has been added to the calendar after the scheduled date and time of the appointment. And like a, an example of that is if a doctor makes a phone appointment with a patient outside of his planned appointment. So I have appointments today. I get a, I, I do a phone appointment with one of the patients. So I squeeze an appointment. At the end of my day, I will want this appointment to appear in my calendar and I will add it back after my day. So of course, since I added the calendar, uh, an appointment in the past, it's going to be that part. So it's going to be a negative delay because you know I went, uh, uh, I created it in the past, and and those appointments, no worries. As you can see in the dashboard for your clinics, they will appear and they are also counted for. Of course, we don't want you to create appointments three months in the past, but for what happens in the day, you'll see them in the uh, the, the dashboard. So as simple as that. If we go to maybe a second question, I have one for you, uh, Andrea. Uh, many of our partners, they use you know, generic doctor's calendar for walk-in clinics, for instance. Uh, are the appointments in the generic doctor's calendar accounted for? Uh, and can we see them in the dashboard? Uh, uh, yeah, so all appointments are visible in the dashboard. As you know, the generic doctor is considered a resource in Mile, and so if, if your clinic has set it up this way, uh, however, if you are filtering on obviously the dashboard for a specific physician, it, it's it's important that the physician is associated or assigned to that given appointment. So, um, essentially, for it to be accounted for, it, the physician's name needs to be on the appointment. Um, typically, the the flow that we've we've noticed in clinics is that at the at the day of the appointment, um, the provider gets changed. Um, in the given appointment, so that way it, it is accounted on the right physician's uh, statistics. So it is possible to change the provider associated with any given appointment at any time from the appointment details window. Perfect, thank you so much. Let's, uh, let's continue on those FAQs. Uh, sure, so the next question is, um, do appointments have to be booked online for me to be eligible for the compensation. Um, as you know, appointments being synced with the hub is the is is at the core of of this agreement. Um, so there is a, a frequent question around where the appointment must be booked. Yes, and the answer is, is I mean, it's no. As I said, all, all all appointments are eligible for that, so they don't need to be booked with the hub. And I think I'm I'm also looking at the the questions from our audience and. Uh, we're asking if it needs to be from a scheduling template for it to be accounted for, and the answer is no. I think it's the time to make sure that you guys understand the difference between the two incentives of the grant. The one on advanced access offering is really only about appointments that were created, the, de the, the dealing time between the time they were created and the time of the appointments, and if they were within 36 and 72 hours. So they're not related to scheduling templates and the offering of the gap, which this is the second pillar, which is about the, 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 the let's say, the, the collective enrollment patients that are uh, as part of a collective uh, enrollment model. And we'll cover that on what we'll have for you in, in, in the weeks to come. But for this specific offering, no, it's, it works for all type of appointments. Of course, they must be with a family physician. And as I said, they must be for a patient enrolled individually with a physician of the GMA. So. It's not about scheduling. If I create manually an appointment in my calendar, it still is going to be accounted for. Okay, let's move on. Uh, is it possible? I'll read it, but is it possible that I don't have access to the dashboard? I, I know that answer. Mention it. It is possible that you don't have access to the dashboard. As I said, Mile Analytics is limited to certain users. I will refer you to your clinic's administration to validate access. And again, for administrators, our team is always available for you. If you want to extend those permissions, we can quickly help you uh, on this matter. Now, Andrea, I have a question for you. Is the Mile Analytics dashboard that I just presented, is it the one used to determine compensation? Yes, great question. So. No, uh, Mile provides you a tool that allows you to monitor those metrics associated with advanced access included in the agreement. 
However, it is the report provided quarterly by the orchestrator that is used for compensation purposes. So we did find that there was an, an unmet need from our, our clients with regards to be able to track that the, those measures across the quarter, not simply look at metrics from the previous quarter. And so for us, uh, we did provide we are providing this tool to help monitor, but ultimately uh, the orchestrator is is, is providing the official report. Uh, for compensation. Should you find any discrepancies or important discrepancies between the reports, um, obviously you can you can use those lists of appointments that we provide in the Mile Analytics dashboard to help you in, in uh, providing supporting materials uh, to the RAMQ um, during the billing period. Yes. Thank you. Um, and uh, let's say this one. So you know, of course, you know the agreement. Even more than I do. That's our our clients. They wanna they wanna have more information, more content on this agreement and the compensation incentives. Where uh, would you refer them? Definitely. So a lot of the resources related to this agreement are only available in French or mostly available in French. Um, however, if you are um, interested in in getting this content, it's obviously available on the FMOQ portal site, which is accessible to its members, so all general practitioners um, of Quebec. And then on the right-hand side is a sample of the RAMQ website, um, which is, is, is responsible for the billing. Um, so a lot of the billing questions are actually answered directly on that website. Perfect. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, I'll let you. I think you mentioned that there was other stuff coming to help our partners uh, on on the monitoring and uh, of those incentives. So I'll, I'll let you maybe pursue this topic. Definitely. And I see that we have a few unanswered questions in the chat. Uh, we'll take those right after this section. So just to circle back, uh, Mile is wants to be and essentially is your partner in meeting the measures that are included in the agreement between the FMOQ and the ministry. It's important for us to be able to support you in achieving those targets and allow you to both monitor and improve your operations if you um, are not meeting the thresholds as of yet. So the first me me measure we mentioned was related to the access to one's gen uh, family doctor. So the tool that we've presented today allows you to monitor um, your adherence to this measure with the dashboard mile analytics. And in the spring, uh, in this spring actually, we are working to essentially make available to you a report on offering by service. So as I mentioned earlier, the group enrollment initiative or measure, sorry, it relates back to scheduling and opened availabilities rather than booked appointments. And so that nuance um, obviously impacts the type of report you'll be getting, uh, be able to, to, to export, but this will be, uh, this will allow you essentially on, um, um, on a given basis to export a report of those availabilities uh, by specifying the specific service that you've assigned to GAP patients. The second component is really allowing you to act on the measures and metrics that you're reading. So uh, to improve your operations, we are working for this spring to deploy an enhanced setting for automated publishing. So obviously uh, we want to give you the most granular control on, on making uh, schedules opened within a given 36 hours or 72 hours to help you meet those thresholds. So um, we have currently a setting in the services that allows you to control uh, essentially in terms of days and weeks when an availability is published to the patient, but also available to be booked in mile. Um, so we'll give you, we're working on a more granular control now that obviously metrics are more based on hours. Um, so really being more granular is becomes more important. So uh, we're really excited to be working on these two other initiatives as well. And obviously communication will follow um, through email uh, once those are available and provide you all the detail about how to uh, use them. Perfect. That sounds awesome. Thank you, Andrea. And, and, and again, we want to we want to really to thank you for being for being there with us today. Um, We've answered a couple of questions, but as I said, we want to. We, there's a couple of questions that were sent to us. We want to make sure we go through them. We want to make sure we answer any questions that you would have on this topic. And I think we're going to read through them and answer those, uh, Andrea, on the spot. Um, Definitely, maybe. Yeah, let's jump in. There's a first one that says, uh, if there's a negative difference between the creation appointment day, we saw that it's okay to add back in the past after your data, an appointment. 
in your in your daily schedule because it was a non-planned appointments for instance so that would explain why we have a negative difference uh, and that's good uh, i'll let you go through this second one for sure so the second question asks um for the 36 and 72 hour measure um do appointments need to fit into a scheduling template so that's a good question actually so because the measure only speaks to booked appointments there's really no concept of having to open a schedule ahead of time so as to, even if an appointment is added day of or outside of a scheduling template that appointment still is considered an appointment um, and it, if, if it is created uh, within 72 hours or 36 hours um, it will fit within the measure so um, no problems there the next question is when will this reporting tab option become available so perhaps this user doesn't have access yes that's a good question so if you do like as i as mentioned normally the reporting uh, tab is is restricted to a certain number of users within your clinic so i will refer you to the administration of your clinic first and if you want to have access to that agree with the administration they will just call us at our support line and we'll just within a matter of minutes we'll give a, we'll give them access to your environment if 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 you're the administrator of your environment and you do not have access to this dashboard i mean again call us we'll rectify that and make sure uh but you should have access to that and it's it's easy to get access so thank you so much um so we do have clients across the country that might be joining this webinar so i think there was a few questions about other provinces um in Canada having, or clients in other provinces than Quebec having access to the dashboard to, that, to monitor their own operations. Yeah, and I know it's a key partner of us in, in, in BC. I'll look into how to give you access. I understand that, you know, regardless of where we're on Canada, it's interesting to monitor the metrics of the appointments we gave within 72 and 36 hours. It's just a bit of a technical question to make sure that we have all of the data in, in BC to make it available, but I, I think we do so. I took the note and I will try to share that uh, uh, with you uh, shortly. Uh, and I, I appreciate the comment. I mean, anything that you know can be cross Canada and that can be in full, we were, we we want to hear about that. So thank you so much for the comment. Um, any other interesting questions I have, we 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 have that we could uh, we could go through? Um, I think there was a question around on the group enrollment uh, initiative. So if uh, open availability is is booked versus is not booked by a GAP patient or patient enrolled in a group, is it still counted? So I can speak to that one. Um, so for the group enrollment initiative, whether an appointment is booked on an availability or not booked, it, it doesn't impact the numbers. So as we spoke earlier, it's about what, what schedule is open and, and, and availability is being published and less about an appointment being taken because there was a few questions around, you know, patients in, enrolled in a group not actually like taking those appointments, um, but these are still accounted for in the group enrollment measure. Another question, is it possible to have appointment slots only become available mm -hmm. within 24, 72 hours ahead of time? Yes, so um, whether it is from booking from the patient portal or whether it is from booking through the patient's file. Um, there is a setting in the service configuration uh, in Mile that allows you to select when the appointment can be booked. It, and the setting is called in the last. So it'll be in the last one day, in the last two days, in the last three weeks. And that allows you to control that an appointment cannot be booked on that slot. Um, it obviously does not impact the calendar per se. So the appointment can still be booked from the calendar at any time. Uh, but we are working, as I mentioned, on an enhancement to that feature to make it more granular and a communication will follow uh, that will outline exactly how to maximize its use. Perfect. And I see another, also another question here that's a bit of an advanced trick using Mile Analytics, but I think since we, you know, we're there and we have the time, I'm going to cover that. So a user asked if it's possible to look at the users of 72 hours appointments by let's say by age group so i'll just take a minute to show you a trick using my analytics so i will go back to my report here and as you can see i, I i'm showing you the proportion of appointments booked in 72 hours for me dr jean lapointe for each month but it does not and, and and here on the left is the absolute numbers but it doesn't show those 72 hours so the you know the green bar 
uh, how is it di distributed per age group? There's no widget for that. Now there's a trick in my analytics that we call drill down. Uh, and I know the person who has the question. So for you who are a bit more familiar, what I'll do is I will right click on my graph on the bar of appointments in 72 hours. I will right click on this and it's gonna show you depending of the language of how it's configured, but it's, it should be in English. So you'll see explore in French or drill down, drill into, and then you can pick a variable and then you'll have access to the behind the scene of my analytics, but I'll just lay, stick to that question and I'm gonna search for age category here. So basically what I want is just to drill down into the data and then I'm gonna have the results for my age groups and I'm gonna have the same graphs, but now I have the same color codes, but now I added the drill down using the age category. So in my case, I could say that, well, I, the largest number was for 30 to 40 years old. And you can see at the widget here, it says that I'm looking into uh, June, uh, June, January of this year and I'm drilling into age category. So again, quickly, when you have a widget like the graph, you can right click and then you can drill into and then you have a recent one if you pick age category, so that's easy. Or you can just uh, go here in picking a variable, have access to the variable and search for age category. If you did not follow this, that's the cue for me to remind you that this webinar is recorded. Uh, we're gonna take a few hours and we are going to add it to our knowledge base. And I think some people didn't know what our knowledge base was, so I'm gonna also take a few minutes to show you that, you know, when you're logged into mile different ways first of all you have the it's a new feature so you see at the top corner right of my screen there's now a little question mark this question mark will bring you as we move into the future a lot of information and guides on how to better master mile but you have mile help so you can search into our knowledge base right from here so you could search webinars and then you're going to get a link to our webinars and knowledge base right from here so if you click it's going to bring you to our knowledge base so that's method one method two is if you are within mile you can click under the on the mile tab and then you will see at the center you have mile help if you click here it's going to bring you to the our knowledge base and this you're at the, the the you if you scroll down you'll see that we have a section that's called webinars where you can always find the webinars that we have in english or in french or even in spanish so that's method Two and method three is if I am on the login page of Mile, you'll see that I have um, Mile help. Now, in my case, again, I apologize, my browser is in French, but you'll see uh, here is going to be uh, written help, uh, Mile help, and then you can click. It's going to bring you to the knowledge base. So under the webinar section, we'll add this webinar in a few hours, so it's recorded. So if you missed some point, you want to rewatch it, that's going to be available to you. So that's good. And I think it covers, honestly, we, we are we want to be respectful of your time. We're so happy of, of your interest being that you're here with us today. Um, we want to thank you so much. Feel free to contact us or support team if you have any questions. And I just have to wish you an amazing day and hopefully to see you in, uh, in, in our next webinar. So stay tuned and have an amazing day.